away. We welcome all the visitors who are here and those who are watching online. We just want to welcome you to our midweek Bible study. And we also want to give honor to where honor is due. We want to honor the apostle and our mother in their absence, Apostle David Kenny and our prophetess Patricia Kenny. We also want to honor our Pastor David and Pastor Surrender also in their absence. And we just trust God that they are doing well, even um, as they're probably preparing to travel back home. We are going to decree and declare tonight that everything, they'll have the traveling grace and uh, all shall be well with them as they prepare to travel back home. So uh, what we're going to do, actually do t this evening, uh, we're going to start off with our prayer for the apostolic team, and then we're going to transition into Bible study. So we'll probably do approximately 30 minutes of prayer, um, corporate prayer, and then we're going to go ahead and transition to our 30 minutes of Bible study. I'm going to try to finish uh, chapter 22, because I believe apostles stopped around verse 1 or 2 in chapter 22. So the the goal is to finish 22 and also finish 23, but we're just going to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So let us uh, prepare to stand, and we're going to worship, and then we're going to go into prayer. I'm going to ask any intercessors who uh, want to pray, feel free. I'm not going to call on you, but you know, at, once I finish, I'll go ahead and open up, and then I'm just going to pass the mic. <laughs> Amen. And if we have any elders um, here as well, we're going to ask the elders and the intercessors to pray. And those of you who are not necessarily on the mic praying, we're going to ask you to be in agreement with us um, as we're praying. If you feel comfortable staying where you're at, fine. If you feel comfortable sitting down, that's fine. If you want to walk around, it's totally fine. But as long as you're in agreement, you know, with us um, as we're praying. You know, the Word of God says, where any two of us touch, come together and agree. Whatever we're asking the Lord for, it shall be done for us. And we trust God that that's what's going to happen. Amen? Amen. So we're going to start off and worship. Worship, just welcome in the presence of the Lord. He's already here. I felt his presence even coming in, and we just thank God for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah to the spirit of intercession being with us tonight as we prepare to intercede on behalf of the apostolic team. Hallelujah. Jesus, we worship you. Ah, Jesus, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, we magnify you. For you are the King of glory. You are the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of your glory. And Jesus, we just worship you and honor you on tonight. We magnify your name. We lift up the name of Jesus on tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus, we declare your lordship on tonight. Even in this house of worship, in this service, in this meeting, in this gathering together, we declare that Jesus is indeed Lord. Our jobs are not Lord. Our families are not Lord. But we declare that Jesus is Lord. Our emotions are not Lord. We command our emotions and our minds and our thoughts right now in the name of Jesus to come under subjection to the Lordship in the obedience of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We cast down every evil imagination. We cast down tiredness. We cast down a weakness, pain, everything that goes contrary to the Lord. Jesus, we lift you up tonight. We welcome your presence, Jesus, in this house on tonight. Ah, by shame. Jesus, we declare that you are the King of glory. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, we lift up the name of Jesus, 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 the Son of the living God, Rabashi, the Prince of Peace, Ed Robo Sire. You are Emmanuel, God with us. You are Emmanuel, you are the God that is with us, Ed Shere Masarabashi. We invite the Spirit of Christ tonight. Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way. Spirit of Christ, Spirit of wisdom, Spirit of understanding, Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Oh, we invite your presence tonight. We invite your presence tonight, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah, you are Lord Jesus. Eh. You are Lord of all. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, Lord. You are the author and the finisher of our faith, and we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, we worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lamb of God. We thank you, Jesus, for coming, stripping yourself of your, your fullness, your royalty, and coming down as a mere man for us, to die for us. Ah, Rabashi. Lord, we thank you that because of your death and your resurrection that we stand here tonight free liberated, redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, redeemed from every curse, curses of sicknesses, generational curse. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you tonight for salvation. We thank you for filling us with your spirit. We thank you. Oh God, we thank you for this grace to even be here tonight interceding and praying. We thank you for even placing the desire in us, Father, to do the things that we're doing because your word declares that it is you that works in us, Father, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, tonight that you created us for good works. We're your workmanship, Father. We didn't create ourselves, oh God, we thank you that you created us for good works. And what we're doing tonight is a good work, standing in the gap, Father, for our apostles, standing in the gap for our prophets, standing in the gap for our pastors, in the name of Jesus, standing in the gap for the ministries that are connected to CGC internationally and even locally, Father. We stand in the gap for our apostolic team tonight. Masakande, we apply the blood of Jesus over the apostolic team tonight. Father, we declare, oh God, may your will, your good, perfect, and acceptable will, Father, continue to be done in their lives in Jesus' name. We thank you, oh God, for your for your for you the miracle that you've already done and getting them, Father to the other side of the world. No harm, no, no hurt, no danger, no issues with the air crash. Father, we thank you. We thank you for that blessing already, Father. We thank you, oh God, for the grace that you continue to give them to travel on the road, whether they're in Jeeps and trucks and cars and vehicles. Father, we thank you that you're giving the driver grace to drive, oh God, to be even witty and skillful as he's driving, Father, to miss Lord, holes and hills and, and things that will cause accidents. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace, Father, working, Father, in our team in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the spirit of unity, Lord God. We thank you that our apostle and prophetess, Father, and our pastors, they work together as a team, Lord. And Father, we thank you that as they're working together as a team, Lord, that the body of Christ over in East Africa, Father, that they're being edified, that they're being encouraged, Lord God, that they're being comforted, by your word, Father, not just through and by your word, by the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that people are being healed and set free and delivered in Jesus' name. We thank you, oh God, that the giants are falling, Father, the demonic altar, the demonic giants are falling because the presence of the living God is with our apostolic team. And Father, the enemy, oh God, idols cannot stand in your presence. Presence. They fall face down, ah, Bashe, and they crumble into pieces. And Father, we declare by faith tonight, Jesus, that the giants, Father, that been, have been holding the people of Uganda, even the people of Kenya in bondage, Father, they fall down tonight. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the liberation of the Holy Spirit sweeping the nation of Uganda, sweeping the nations of Kenya in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is being destroyed 
demonstrated, Father, through and by our apostolic team. We thank you that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are flowing. Ah, Jesus, through the apostolic team, Father. Ah, oh, God, that the people of Kenya, the people of Uganda, Father, may be free and free indeed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that generational curses are being broken, Father. Generational curses of, of witchcraft and idolatry, even poverty, Father, and lack are being broken in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and we give you glory tonight, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing, oh, Heavenly Father, in the nation of Kenya and in the nation of Uganda and through and by our apostolic team. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to our King, our Savior, our Lord. Jesus, truly, you are our everything. And we come this night to glorify you, to esteem you high, O oh God. We come in reverence and awe of the almighty God, of our sovereign King, who has all power in his hands. You rule, O oh God, and you reign supreme. Glory, glory, glory to Jesus, the name above every name. At your name, O oh God, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Jesus is Lord. You are Lord over all, O oh God. You are Lord over our lives. You are Lord over our families, over our communities, over the entire world, O oh God. You are Lord. Hallelujah, O oh God. You are ultimate, O oh Lord, in your power and in your strength, O oh God. We just thank you, hallelujah, for you being God. God and being God all by yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come this night lifting up, oh God, our apostle, our prophetess, and our pastors, and the entire apostolic team over in Africa, oh God. Father, we plead and apply the blood of Jesus by faith. Your blood, oh God, that heals and delivers. Your blood that covers and protects. We plead the blood of Jesus by faith over our team, over their minds, over their hearts their spirit and over their souls oh God we plead the blood over their luggage over their food every piece of transportation over their hotel rooms and over every service oh God in the name of Jesus we bind up and we rebuke the hand of the enemy we declare and decree that the enemy has no fight oh God no fight in the name of Jesus no weapon formed against our team shall prosper and any tongue oh God any devil that rises against them shall be condemned in the name of Jesus. We declare every giant is falling in the name of Jesus. We declare let God arise and every enemy be scattered from over every service, from over our teams in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your angels, the angels of God, O oh Lord, the angels that excel in strength. We thank you for every angel you have given charge over our team to keep them in all of their ways. We declare they shall bear them up in their hand, lest they dash their foot against a stone. We come calling on Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the commander of the mighty angelic armies. We declare he is fighting every battle causing every war to cease in the name of Jesus. We declare that every war shall cease from over our team in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the work that has already been done. But we thank you, Father, for the work that you have yet to do through our team in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the word that shall come forth with boldness and with confidence, O oh God. A word that hits like a hammer, breaking up the fallow ground in the lives of your people, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, your word that shall go forth with power and demonstration, O oh God. Your word that shall heal, deliver, and set your people free in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree, O oh God, that miracles, signs, and wonders are being wrapped wrath even as of now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for every soul that is being saved, every healing that is going forth, every deliverance. We thank you for, for freedom from every demonic force, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We declare that our team, hallelujah, hallelujah, 
is being protected from every evil work in the name of Jesus, from all demonic forces. We declare that they are, hallelujah, they are raised high above any demonic and negative influence in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for you having your way, for leading, guiding, and directing them into all truths by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way. Give them the words to say. We declare your wisdom, O oh God, upon our team. We just thank you, Father, for you being God and being God all by yourself. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory, glory be to Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Father, we come thanking you for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you're yet to do in the lives of your people. We thank you that you are the bishop and the redeemer of our soul. Father, we thank you that you are God strong and mighty, and you are mighty in battle. God, we thank you that you are the lifter of our head, oh God. We thank you that you are a way maker, Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you are a bridge over troubled water, oh God. And Father, we thank you that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the spirit of the Lord will lift the standard against him. And Father, we say, have your way in Africa. Father, we we plead and apply the blood of Jesus over the apostolic team. We declare no weapon formed against the apostolic team shall prosper. Father, we thank you for all the disciples that was made over in Africa, oh God. We thank you for the lives that was changed and transformed in Africa, God, for all the souls that were saved, that came into the kingdom of, the, of your dear son in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the miracles, signs, and wonders that went forth in your name, oh God. Father, we thank you for a breakthrough in the atmosphere in Africa. We thank you for a shift in the atmosphere in Africa, oh God. We declare and decree that Africa will never be the same in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, your word declares that where sin abounds, your grace more so abound. And we thank you for the spirit of grace abounding in Africa, God. We thank you for the spirit of truth going forth in Africa, oh God. And we thank you that the people of Africa, oh God, that they adhere to the spirit of truth, oh God. And the truth shall make them free in the name of Jesus. We declare the people in Africa are walking in liberty, oh God. Father, that they are free to worship you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we thank you that salvation has been brought to the ends of the earth by the apostolic team in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we declare and decree that you are keeping the team from unreasonable and wicked men in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that nothing they eat or drink shall bring any sickness or harm to their bodies in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for strengthening them daily according to your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for unity in the team. We thank you for peace in the team, oh God. We thank you that they're speaking the same thing. Only what the Father says is what they're speaking, oh God. And Father, we thank you for all you're doing in and through Africa. Father, we plead and apply the blood of Jesus over every form of transportation. We declare and decree that no weapon formed against the transportation shall prosper. We declare there will be no accidents, there will be no vehicle problems, no mechanical problems in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for taking them safely and bringing them back safely at the appointed time and hour with no hindrances or delays. We declare that they will come back and find that the church ran decently and in order, that everyone is on one accord, oh God, with the same mind in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you for giving them favor with you and man, oh God. We thank you for favor with customs. We thank you for favor at the border in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you that they suffered no lack, oh God. We thank you that you met all of their needs according to your riches and glory 
in Christ Jesus. And Father, we thank you that as we prepare to hear a word from on high on tonight, oh God, we thank you that it's all of you, oh God, and none of her in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that the word shall fall on good ground on tonight. We thank you that your word will prepare, will bring much fruit, God, that the fruit shall remain in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we won't fail to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, Father. We bless you. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, Lord. We come together tonight on one accord, God, to give you glory, honor, and praise. For we thank you, Father God, for your move. We thank you for keeping us, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for ushering us into your spirit, God. Oh, Father, we thank you for your spirit that reigns over Christian Grove Cathedral, Lord. We thank you for your spirit that reigns over our apostolic team, Father. And Lord, as you continue to watch over them and keep them, God, help them to keep their minds stayed on you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your safety that's upon their lives. We thank you for your grace and mercies that's upon their lives. And Father, as they stand as servants of the Most High, God, to teach your word, God, that your word will go forth in boldness, God, in the name of Jesus, will go forth in deliverance, God, in healing and setting the people free in the name of Jesus, Lord. Let their minds be renewed in you, Father God, as they continue to grow in you, God, and give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praises. Father, thank you for our team, God, as they set order, God, and send correction in the name of Jesus, Lord, that souls are being one for the kingdom. And for that, we say thank you, Father, because it's all about you, God, and we thank you for the works that you are doing through our team, Father. Continue to raise them up, for you are the lifter of their heads, Father. And for that, as they look to you, Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of their faith. Father, we say continue to have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. So we thank you in advance, God, by giving you hallelujah on this evening, Lord, for keeping them, God, and bringing them back safe and sound. Let all be well within their homes and their families while they're away, God. And Father, even on their return back, God, that you continue to strengthen them and give them rest in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done, God, in heaven as it is on earth. Father God, on earth as it is in heaven. Continue to bless your people, God, and as you move mightily in them, we say thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we lift up holy hands because of who you are, God, and the works that's being done in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, we thank you because Africa was rise up and give you praise, Lord. Father God, we, we declare your word, Father, over all nations in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for sending them into new territory, God, as your favor is upon them and with man, God. Father, that you are keeping them safe and covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Father God, as we lift up our voices to tell you that we love you, and we thank you for all that you're doing in us and through us, God. Continue to have your way in our team, God. Father God, that no weapons formed against them shall prosper, God. And Father, all that you are doing in them and through them, people will Will see that they are blessed. They will hear your word. They will believe your word. Oh, they will continue to praise your Lord. Oh, Father God, that they will surrender unto you, making Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior. And for that, Lord, we say thank you, Father. So let your spirit rest, rule, and reign over all nations, God, over Africa, God, over this world, Father. Oh, and we thank you for your mighty hand upon us in the name of Jesus. So have your way in the sanctuary sanctuary tonight, God. Oh, Father, we bless you and thank you because, Lord, we look unto you, for you are our God, and there is no one greater. So, Father, we shout with the voice of triumph, Lord, in the atmosphere, as atmosphere changes, Lord. We thank you for giving us your word from on high, and as you speak, Lord, your people will listen and they will hear in the name of Jesus. So, we thank you in advance, Father God. Oh, we clap our hands. We give you hallelujah. And we say glory be to God, our God, our God, our creator, our ruler, in the name of Jesus. So have your way, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, do what you want to do, Father God, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing. We thank you for restoration. Oh, Father God, we thank you for your peace. 
for your joy because you are our portion and you are more than enough. So we say hallelujah with victory tonight, God. Oh, we shout victory in the name of Jesus, Lord, that your plan and your will and your purpose will continue to go forward through Christian Growth Cathedral. Have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we will not fail to give you all the glory, to give you all the honor, and to give you all the praises. And it is in your precious name. Oh, Father God, your people, we say amen, amen, and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Elder. Thank you, all the intercessors. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And Father, as we transition into our Bible study, Father, we just want to thank you, Father, for this opportunity, this privilege, and this honor, Lord, to be in your presence, Lord God, to hear from you. And we ask, Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts tonight as we study your word. Encourage us, edify us, build us up, exhort us, comfort us where we need to be comforted. And Father, I thank you for the grace to teach tonight, but not just for the grace to teach, but we also thank you for the grace to learn and to learn with an understanding, Father, that we may be able to apply your word in our lives in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, extract out of your word exactly what you desire to speak to us, your people, on tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And we will not fail to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. So for those that um, know me, which is everybody in here, Y'all know I love the word. I get excited. I get real hyped about, you know, the word and the scriptures and all of that. So um, what I'm going to do is just do a brief review, probably starting in 1 Samuel 18. But my goal, through the help of the Holy Spirit, is to complete uh, 1 Samuel 22 and also 1 Samuel 23. So that way when apostle comes back or whomever, or pastor, whomever he has teaching next, uh, they can start in the beginning of um, 1 Samuel 24. So now, one of the things that Apostle um, has taught us over the years is that Satan is a legalist, right? Meaning, he has to have or gain legal right in order to gain access into our lives. And one of the ways that he gains this legal right or legal access is through sin. Sometimes sin, known sin that we willfully commit or unknown sin. And um, for those of us who have already finished reading 1 Samuel, um, one of the things that we'll see in Saul's lifespan, we'll see how when he got out of position or when he sinned, you know, and disobeyed God, getting himself out of position, he stopped hearing from the Lord. And, you know, I can personally attest to that. When you're not in position, you can't hear from God. You kind of like in limbo. You don't know what the Lord is, you know, saying, this, that, and the other. But once you get in position, then, you know, your spirit is opened up. You can receive and hear from the Lord and all of that. So, anyway, uh, because of Saul's lack of obedience to God's instruction uh, throughout his uh, kingship, we'll see how the enemy really just disgraced him. Um, if you read towards the end of First Samuel, we'll see how he's, he went into witchcraft. He consulted a witch. He wind up committing suicide. I mean, a lot of things just transpired because he was out of the will of the Lord, out of position. So let's do some, a little bit of review before we start in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 22. Let's look at, uh, let's see where I want to go. Um, 1 Samuel, okay, 18, where we see the beginning of where Saul was jealous of David and he tried to kill him. And let's look at 1 Samuel 18, verses 8 and 9. And I forgot I'm not in Sunday school, so I can't say. Somebody read that for me. I got to read it myself. So let's see. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. 1 First, First Samuel 18, verses 8 and 9, it says, And Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. What saying? The saying that the women in the, the city, they started praising uh, David because he had just defeated Goliath, the Philistine, right? Cut off his head and all that. And the women, you know, was around saying, Saul didn't kill his thousands. I mean, uh, what? Saul didn't kill his thousands, but David killed his tens of thousands. <laughs> 
And so now here, here we are at verse 8. It says, and Saul was very wroth, meaning he was higher than angry. And the saying displeased him, and he said, they have ascribed unto David tens of thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? See, here's the beginning of Saul's um, fear. And then verse 9 says, and Saul eyed David from that day forward. He became envious of David. Now let's look at another scripture in James chapter 3. This is in the New Testament about what envy and, and strife uh, can do to us. Okay, Aaron has it up there. It says, for where envy and strife is, there is what? Confusion in every evil work. So if we've been reading through 1 Samuel, we see how Saul's envious, you know, envious attitude towards David has caused a lot of confusion and every evil work. I mean, it got to the point where he even tried to kill his own son, Jonathan, right? Okay. All right. So let's look at, uh, let's see. Let's look at, I just covered 1 Samuel 18. Okay. And still in 1 Samuel 18, uh, Apostle already went over the story of Jonathan and um, David, their, their, their love that they had for one another, you know, their, that brotherly love, that phileo uh, type of love. And I actually looked up the word, that word loved there in uh, where it says that in David loved, loved, I mean, Jonathan loved David as his own soul. That word love is the Hebrew word ahaba, A-H-A-B-A. And it's used interchangeably throughout scripture showing, demonstrating God's love towards his own people or human uh, love towards one another. Um, and then looking at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 19, that's where we see where tr Saul tried to um, kill David a second time. And that can be found in verse 10. Let's look at 9. 1 Samuel 19 verses 9 and 10. It says, and the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. Now, let me just stop right there. So, mind you, David just uh, defeated Goliath, right? He just defeated Goliath, and in chapter 18 of 1 Samuel, Saul actually put or promoted David to be captain over the men of war. But he's still taking a humble position and sitting down and playing for Saul. You see the, the humility in David's uh, character? And we'll, I'll show you uh, in, in a few minutes um, some of the leadership qualities of David that he had. And that's, that's one of them, his humility and his honor still even being a mighty man of war, still taking the position as a musician and playing for Saul. So again, let's look at verse uh, 9. First Samuel 19, verse 9 says, And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, and as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand. Verse 10, And Saul sought to smite David, even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence. And he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. So that's the second time that we see in Scripture where David, uh, I mean, uh, Saul physically tried to harm uh, David. Now let's go to verse or chapter 20 in 1 Samuel. Apostle already went over that. This is where Jonathan helps uh, David escape. Um, Saul's wrath where he told him, you know, I'll do the arrow and if if I um, say go further, go further, go further, then you know my dad is still upset with you. So and that's basically what happened uh, on that. And now we're going to go into chapter 21 where David went to Nob, to Ahimelech, the priest. And let's look at verses... Chapter 21, verses, uh, look, let's look at verse 6. 
So now here David is on the run, and he went to Nob, and he came to Ahimelech, who is a priest. Now, mind you, David is hungry. They're famished. So, you know, they're asking the priest if he has something for them to eat. And verse 6 says, So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day that it was taken away. Now, who knows what the showbread um, is or what does it represent? Does anybody know? Show, the showbread, S-H-E-W-B-R-E-A-D. The showbread was the bread that was in the tabernacle and it had to constantly be replaced with fresh bread. What's another title for Jesus? The, the bread of life. That's what the showbread represents. It's also known as the bread of his presence. Let's look at Exodus. I don't, I don't think I gave Aaron this particular um, scripture, but it's Exodus 25, verse 30. This is when the bread of presence or showbread is first mentioned um, in the Bible. Exodus 25, verse 30. And, okay. And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me always. Verse 31. Okay, and thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his, his branches, his bowls, his knobs, and his flowers shall be of the same. So this is where Moses is giving instruction to them on how to build a tabernacle. But in verse 30 is when the bread of presence or the showbread was first mentioned. It was, a, a, it was within the tabernacle and basically is a reflection of who Jesus is, Christ, the bread of life. So, and the other thing to point out with the, the importance of the showbread is Jesus actually makes mention of this particular incident all the way in the book of Matthew. Let's turn there. Matthew chapter 12, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4 of Matthew 12. Okay, and it says, At that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were in hunger, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was a hunger, and, that, and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them, which were with him, but only for the priest. You know, Jesus was in, letting them know, I am the Sabbath. <laughs> it don't matter, you know, he was trying to let those religious leaders know. But I just thought that was pretty significant that Jesus made mention of th this particular incident that happened in First Samuel all the way, you know, in Jesus' time. Okay, okay so let's skip on down. Uh, okay, so we're now... David flees to, so he went from Nob to Akish, right? He flees to Akish, and then what happened in Akish with the king of Gath? He start acting, David starts to act what? Like he's retarded or something. <laughs> Mentally ill. <laughs> right. And the reason he did that is because they recognized who he was, and they were afraid that he was going to go back and tell um, Saul what was going on. Um... So David flee from Nob to Akish, and then he's going to come to the cave of Adullam. But before we get there, let me make sure I went over everything I wanted to go. Okay, I did. So now we're in, verse, in chapter 22. All right, and I believe Apostle stopped around verse 2. So it says, chapter 22, verse 1, it says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Now, when Apostle... Uh, started reading this, he said, remember Adullam, right? Right? Who remembers when Adullam was first mentioned in the Bible? Yep. Okay, do y'all remember the story of Judah and Tamar? Let's go there. So let's go to Genesis chapter 38. And we want to see when Adullam was first uh, mentioned. There we go, okay. Okay, and it came to pass at that time that Judah went down from his brethren and turned into 
turned into a certain Adulamite whose name was Hira. That was his friend, right? Um, let's look at verse 2. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. Verse 3. And she conceived and bare a son, and he named his, or I don't want to read complete, but if you all remember of the story of Judah and Tamar, he wind up, you know, having twins by his daughter-in-law. But the significance in the uh, cave of Adullam is this is when the word Adullamite or somebody from Adullam was first mentioned in Genesis 38, verse 1. Okay, so now let's look at, go back to 1 Samuel 22. Starting at verse 1 again, it says, David therefore departed thence, and escaped to the cave of, of Adullam, and when his brethren all his father's house heard it, they went down th thither to him. So, number one that we find out, just in reading verse one by itself, David de departed from where he was at in the Kish. He went down to Adullam, and when he got to Adullam, his brethren, his brothers, and all, it says all his father's house, which includes his father and his mother, they came down there, they heard about it, and they came down there to meet him. Let's look at verse 2. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them. And there were about 400 men. So let's look at this. It says everyone that was distressed, everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented. That sounds like the church, people in church, right? People stressed, whether it's stressed about family, stressed about bills, stressed about whatever, people who were in debt, right? Or people who were discontented with their lives. Discontentment means lack of satisfaction with your circumstances or your, your status or your situation. So it, it just goes to show you how David in his, uh, during his time of fleeing Saul, he exemplified leadership skills. One, one of the leadership skills that he exemplified was his bravery, right? When he, when in 1 Samuel 17, it says that he ran towards the enemy, Goliath, right? And then he was very courageous, right? And then his faith in God was unmatched. Let's look at 1 Samuel 17, verse 37, and then we're going to go to verses 45 and 47. 1 Samuel 17, verse 37 first. Here we go. And then we're going to read 45 and 47. Now, again, look, we're looking at the leadership skills to show that David qualified to be a leader, right? Okay, so 1 Samuel 17, 37 says, David said, moreover, the Lord... Now, he's talking to Goliath in this particular passage. He said... Moreover, the Lord that hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Now let's go look at 45 and verse 47. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Look at his faith in God. Like, verse, okay. And all... And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord, and he will give you into our hands. So David exemplified bravery, courage. His faith in God was unmatched. He displayed honor. Let's look at ways that he displayed honor. I mentioned early on in 1 Samuel 18, verse 5. Let's go back there. Now here he goes, he just, he had already uh, defeated Goliath. Saul put him as a youth. Now he was a youth and Saul made him captain over uh, the men of war, right? And, okay, verse 5 says, 18.5 says, And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him. So he was obedient 
to the, the, the Lord's anointed, right? Whatever he told him to go, he ain't say, well, apostle, I can't. No. He said, <laughs> he said, and whatsoever, whithersoever, Saul sent him and behaved himself wisely. So he was a man of discretion, right? And Saul set him over the men of war. Now, again, he's a, this, he's a youth at this, because in 1 Samuel 17, verse 33 and verse 55, Saul even said, you're still, you know, Goliath is a man of war. You're, you're but a youth. So he, he was a youth, and, and Saul, you know, appointed him over um, the men of war. Saul sent him over the men, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Let's look at another scripture exemplifying David's being a man, a, a man of honor. Let's look at 1 Samuel 18. We're going to read verses 14 through 16, and then we're going to read verse 30. And David behaved, it keeps repeating it, first, first, again in 1 Samuel 18, verse 5, And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Verse 15, Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Sometimes you being in position, doing what God called you to do. Now, it's saying afraid, but that's, some people can get in, intimidation as, a, as being afraid. People can be intimidated by you when you're walking in your purpose and your calling. But you got to not pay them any mind and keep doing what you do. Don't get out of position because you're trying to please everybody, right? Because, you know, the Bible says, I think it's in Proverbs 29, verse 25. Google it if I'm wrong. But it says that the fear of man bringeth forth a what? See? The fear of man bringeth a snare. When we fear men, it's a snare to us. Whether it's intimidation, whether you're terrified, public speaking, all of these things, you know, anytime you're afraid of man, and, and Saul is a perfect example of that. The first time he was disobedient, it said in, uh, let's go back, actually, matter of fact, let's go to um, 1 Samuel. I want to just show you all this. This just came to my mind, so thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's go to 1 Samuel, um, 1 Samuel chapter 10. Let's look at verse 8 and 9. The fear of man bringeth forth a snare. The fear of man is a trap. It'll stumble you up. It said, but whoso trusted, trusted in the Lord. See, when we fear people, we don't, we don't trust God. You can say you trust God all the, through, your, through lip service, but if you fear in people, you really don't trust God. Because if you trust God... Like even tonight, I can have all of these notes here on paper, but in order to speak it out publicly, I don't know how things are going to go, but I just trust the Holy Spirit that I'm going to say exactly what, he, what we need to hear and just keep it moving. Okay, so 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 8, it says, this is when Samuel, the prophet, right, was giving Saul instruction on what to do, right? And it says, and thou, this is Saul, I mean Samuel talking to Saul. He said, and thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice. Sacrifice the peace offering seven days thou shalt tarry till I come to thee and show thee what thou shalt do. So look, let's look at 1 Samuel 13. Let's see what Saul did. 1 Samuel 13, starting at verse 8. Okay. It says, and he, talking about Saul, tarry seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from Saul. And I think in another translation, it said the people started separating themselves from him because Saul, I mean, uh, Samuel didn't show up. Again, Saul focusing on the people. And look at, look at what uh, Saul did. Verse 9, and Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me and peace offering, and he offered the burnt. Now, is he a priest? <laughs> so you see, that was the first act of disobedience. He got, a, got out of position looking at the people scattering away from him. Can't do that, right? All right, let's go back. You see how time flies? Only got 10 minutes. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's go back to 1 Samuel 22. And we're still looking at the leadership qualities of David, right? Um, he was a man of honor. We just went over 1 Samuel 18, verses 14 and 16. Look, let's look at 1 Samuel 18, verse 30, talking about David's leadership qualities 
him being a man of honor. Then the princes of the Philistines went forth, and it came to pass after they went forth that David behaved him. Here we go again. David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. Amen? Now, one of the things in, in my uh, research or studying of 1 Samuel 22, I learned that Psalm 57 may have been written during this time that he was actually at the cave of Adullam. We're not going to read uh, Psalm 57 for a lack of time, but you all can jot that down. Psalm uh, 57. And Apostle also mentioned as well that a lot of this a lot of the psalms that were written by David were written during the time that he was a fleeing from Saul, fleeing for his life, basically. Um, so let's read on down. First Samuel 22. Now we're going to go down to the part where he asked the king of Moab to take care of his, or let his father and his mother stay there while he's on the run. Okay, so let's see. Let's, let's go at verse 3. It says, And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold or the stronghold uh, in the doula. And the prophet Gad said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart, and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came into the forest of Horeth. Now, I looked up who was the prophet Gab. He's mentioned here in 1 Samuel 22, verse 5. He's also mentioned in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verses 11 through 12. I'm not going to read. I'm just going to give you the scripture. Uh, and then Gad is also mentioned in first. Let's look at First Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, verse twenty-nine. First Chronicles, chapter twenty-nine, verse twenty-nine. There we go. It says, "Now the acts of David the king, first and last, behold, they were written in the book of Samuel the seer, which is what we're reading now. They were also written in in the book of Nathan the prophet, and in the book of Gad the seer." Now. I know you all have heard that there are, uh, there are books in the Bible that aren't necessarily in the Holy Bible. But God knew what books he wanted in the Bible. So if, if they, he wanted them here, they would have been in here. But I just wanted you all to see that's where uh, the, who, who the man of God, the prophet Gad was. He was also giving David wisdom and insight like Samuel was. All right, so let's go down to... Um, okay, verse 6. When Saul heard that David was, verse 6 of chapter 22, when Saul heard that David was discovered and the men that were with him, now Saul abode in Gibeah under a tree in Ramah, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Verse 7, then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse, talking about David, give every one of you fields and vineyards and make all of you captains and thousands of thousands and captains of hundreds? that all of you have conspired against me, and there is none that showeth me that my own son have made a league with the son of Jesse, and there is none of you that is sorry for me, or showeth unto me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait at this day. He just, just lying. <laughs> Want people, somebody to feel sorry for him, because he in his feeling. Because he, T, D, exactly. <laughs> Look at verse 9. Then answered Doeg the Edomite. Now Doeg was um, when David went to Ahimelech the priest. Let's look at 1 Samuel 21 verse 7. When he went to Ahimelech the priest and got the showbread and, and um, Goliath's sword, Doeg was there, right? Doeg worked for Saul. So look at verse 7 of 1 Samuel 21 of Sir Samuel 21. It says, Now a certain man of the servants of Saul, uh, now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day detained before the Lord. And his name was who? Doeg the Edomite. He was the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. Here go Doeg in 22, snitching. Tell him, you know, I see. So let's look at first, <laughs> first Samuel 22, verse 9. That's where we stop, right? Then answered Doeg, the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, 
I saw the son of Jesse coming to know the, Ahim, the to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub. And he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him victuals like provisions and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob. And they came, all of them, to the king. Verse 12. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have you conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, and that thou hast given him bread and a sword and hast inquired of God for him? See, ain't nobody inquiring for God for him. So he upset that... <laughs> <laughs> right? Inquiring for, of God for him that he should rise up against me to lie in wait as it is this day. Verse 14. Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house? Right? Verse 15. Did I, did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of this, less or more. Verse 16. And the king, look us all. And the king said, thou shalt surely die. T tonight, you're going to die tonight, Ahimelech. Thou and all thy father's house. So Saul just furious. <laughs> and the, watch this. Verse 17. And the king said unto the footmen that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. Look at what the servants of the Lord. See, they had more fear than him. But the servants of the Lord would not put forth their hand to fall on the priests of the Lord. They're not going to touch the anointed men of God. <laughs> right? His servant had more fear and reverence for the Lord than his own self. Right? Look at verse 18. Here go Doeg. And the king said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Doeg the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priest, and slew on that day four score and five persons, that's 85, that did wear a linen ephod. Can you imagine? Verse 19. And know the city of the priest smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings, oxen and asses, sheep and the edge of the sword. Now get this. He killing the men of God, the anointed men of God, but when God gave him a instruction to kill Amalekites to wipe them out, who was evil people, he, he ain't even do it. Ah, uh, he say, see? But this, this is going back into James chapter 3, where there's envy and strife, there's what? Confusion in every evil work. He just went on a killing rampage, right? Okay, so verse 20, And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abathar, escaped and fled after David. And, and Abiathar, uh, it might be Abathar, Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's peace, priest. Verse 22, And David said unto Abathar, knew it, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned, he's, and then to, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the person of thy father's house. Verse 23, abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Amen. We want to stop right there because it's 759. So I wanted to finish chapter 23, but... I'm going to stay with the time. 7, seven o'clock we start, 8 o'clock we finish. Amen. We thank God for his word. We thank God for his word. We thank God for the lesson that we learned on tonight. We thank God for the prayer, and we thank God for answered prayer. And, Father, tonight as we prepare, Father, to close on tonight, Father, we just thank you for, for answered prayer. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, for ministering to us and speaking to us on tonight. We thank you for your goodness, Father. We thank you that your goodness and your mercy, Father, that it endures forever. And Father, we thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. Your word declares, Father, that your loving kindness and your compassion, they fail not. Oh, where would we be, Father, had you not 
been compassionate toward us time after time after time after time again. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, oh God. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. And Father, if there's anything that we missed in prayer tonight concerning the praying and the covering, Father, and to in the interceding of, of our apostle and our prophets and pastors, Father, we ask according to your word that you will perfect that which concerns them. And we ask, Father God, that you would do exceedingly, Lord, that you would do abundantly, Father, and above all that we could even imagine or ask with our own mouths, Father. We thank you. You know what they stand in need of, Father. We thank you for supplying their every need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And Father, we declare by faith tonight that even as it was done in the book of Acts, so is it being done, Father, with our apostolic team, that they're going forth and ministering and preaching and teaching and demonstrating the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. No man forbidding them in the name of Jesus, according as it was in Acts 29. So it is with them in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you for your grace tonight, even as we go to our respective homes and leave from here. May we go covered under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father. May we arrive to our respective destinations safely. No harm, no danger coming towards any body. And we apply the blood of Jesus over the entire congregation, Father. Every person who has been afflicted, Father, in their physical bodies. Father, we release the healing power of, of God tonight over them in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heals. And we thank you for speedy healing, speedy recovery in Jesus' name, Father. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are dismissed.